see a lot of ads that say, take this supplement, eat your diet this way, do these workouts, it's all crap. So you clicked on the video, so I'm guessing that means you got arm pump, and arm pump sucks. So seat time is the number one thing, hands down. But let's assume you're riding regularly, one, two times a week, whatever it is. Most of you are able to ride. You're still getting arm pump. Well, the way you ride the bike is going to determine whether you're getting arm pump or not. You're going to see a lot of ads that say, take this supplement, eat your diet this way, do these workouts. It's all crap. If your diet sucks, that might have a small factor, yes. If your diet is absolutely perfect, you're taking supplements, you're doing everything on the moon perfect, but you're still getting arm pump, will have something to do with either your bike setup or your body. So let's take all that out of the equation, let's just focus on the body. There's three things that you need to focus on when you're riding to make sure you're mitigating your arm pump as much as possible. That's gonna be your contact, your contact, your control, and your balance. Your contact is gonna be your contact points between you and the bike. That's gonna be your foot pegs, where your knees touch the bike, where you sit and your legs are on the bike again, and your hands, okay? Anywhere your body's contacting the bike, we have to optimize that to make sure that we are con we, we have contact with the bike, we have control of the bike, we're not overriding the bike. If we can optimize all these points, that's gonna allow us to not overwork certain areas, which ends up being our hands and our arms, because at the end of the day, your hands how you hold things. So you start thinking, I need to hold on tighter, and you forget that your legs are where we get all of our strength from the motocross, okay? Second thing, your control. Control meaning the controls of the bike, your brakes, your clutch, your throttle. If you're not using your controls smoothly, you're going to make the bike more abrupt, hard hitting. It's going to be more jerky. It's going to make you want to grab on tighter again. And that goes back to the body. The body's going to, you're going to start thinking, oh, the bike's jerking away. I need to hold on tight. So you got to have control. And then your balance. Your body has to move with the bike. If you all trained with me before or you've seen other videos I've done, I like to say anticipate the movement of the bike. Meaning if the bike's going forward, to go forward with it if you're on the brakes and the bike is wanting to throw you forward you need to counteract that movement and you need to go to the back of the bike move back get away from the handlebars that way you don't have that sensation of i'm going over the bars i need to hold on tighter so i don't flip forward okay so we have contact control and our balance all right so <clears throat> let's break these down i'll throw some clips in here y'all can see exactly how it's going on all right, here's a seesaw, a teeter-totter, balance beam. Remember this, this is gonna come back up in a little bit and try and think how does this correlate to a dirt bike. Now here's a neutral sitting position. We have our back straight, our elbows are up in a strong position, our joints are connected, elbow, wrist, and shoulder are all connected. And then here's me standing, look at my elbow, wrist, and shoulder, they're not connected, they're, it's broken, there's no connection there. That's gonna throw us off. And then here's us, if we're standing properly, we have our elbows in a neutral, straighter, a more straight position. We have a straight back, straight legs. Here's if we were breaking. All I did is I just brought my hips back. I didn't bend my legs. I didn't move my arms around. I just brought my hips straight back. All right, contact. Now, as we look at this clip here, look at my knees. They are on the bike. They're not bouncing around. I'm not moving around the bike. I am keeping my body secured where I can, meaning my feet, my ankles, my knees, my hands are, are moving, my wrist is moving, but my knees never leave the bike. See, my knees on both sides of the bike, even if my foot comes up, my knees always stay attached to the bike. That's where your stability comes from on these bikes. Imagine if your tie-down straps in the back of your truck came loose, the bike would fall over. Your legs will react the same way. Control, all right, listen to the sound of my throttle as I accelerate. I am smooth on the throttle. I'm not being aggressive. I'm letting the bike deliver its power smooth. I have one throttle per section of the track. Same thing with my brakes. Anytime I get on the brakes, it's the same thing. I want one braking section, or one braking area per section that I enter. Just with my throttles, no different. I want one throttle delivered per section of the track. From obstacle to obstacle, I want one throttle. The smoother I can deliver these controls, the smoother the bike's going to handle, and this will apply into our balance. But if we have our controls thrown off, it's just not going to allow it to work. So now think about this balance beam again. If we're on the gas or the brakes, the bike will start to pivot, front or rear. If the center of this balance beam is our foot pegs, and the other sides, the teetering sides, are our tires, well that's going to be where our balance comes in. Because our bike wants to pivot front and rear from the foot pegs. If we start to brake heavily, we're going to pivot 
forward. We're adding weight to the front end of the bike, taking weight away from the rear end. Again, foot pegs are the center point of our bike. So now let's take it to the opposite, opposite extent. If we accelerate, the throttle is going to deliver power to the rear end, which is going to pull the back end down and lighten up the front end. So that's where our body position comes into play. Look here, if I'm standing up, my chin is over the handlebars. I'm, I have a front end bias with my standing position. If I could draw a line from my chin to my toes, I would not have my knees touching that line. So watch this in slow motion here. Pause it if you need to get a look. My chin is forward, my toes are in that line where my knees would be behind the line. So then let's look at what most riders tend to have their issues with. When I tell riders to stand up, this is where people start to get their issues. They're not squeezing their legs enough, so their legs will start to buckle. The buckling is because your legs don't feel like they have contact. Well, the, shroud, the shrouds get wide at the front of the bike. So then these riders will start pushing their knees to where they can get the grip. Now you're at the front of the bike. Well, remember, if I drew a line from my chin to my toes, what's going to hit that line? My knees. We don't want our knees touching that line because that means we're too far forward. Well, how do we fix this? Well, you'd like to pull your hips back, pull your knees back, and that's going to give you back in that straight leg, straight back scenario. When you're in the situation like you are in this picture that I am in right here, we, if we were accelerating, it's going to pull all of our weight back. Our whole body is getting thrown back. All of our strength in our arms is going to be holding us to the bike. Well, let's take it to the opposite extent. If I was on the brakes right here in this position, I have no way to move backwards. My knees are too far forward for me to go back. I would have to lean my chest back, which is separating my body from all of my control points, my hands, my legs, my feet. So I have no way to stabilize or control myself in this position. So whenever you're standing, you've got to make sure that one, your legs are tight for sure, but you need to straighten your legs. Now you don't want to lock your legs out, of course, you want to have movement there. So what I always like to say, straighten your legs, lock them out, and then just a tiny bend past locked out. So that way you still have movement to them. Remember, your legs are an addition to your bike's suspension. Okay, remember that. Your legs are an addition to your bike's suspension. If your legs can't move, you're not allowing your bike to move optimally because the bike is doing all the work that your body should be helping it do. So if we can get our legs to help the bike, well then let's continue up our body. Well then our hips can move and our hips can help the bike. And then the upper part of our body can now balance the bike out properly. If our hips are in this position, our chest cannot help the bike. Our elbows cannot move freely. We are just stuck. We have to be able to be in the position where you can manage all three of these control points we're talking about. Your control, your balance, <clears throat> and your contact. If your contact is off, you have no control. If your control is off, you will have no balance. All three of these things have to work together so we can always optimize where we are on the bike. Now, if you guys feel like this information helped you, please leave a comment. Let me know if it helped you or not, if there's something I could have done different. If there's other videos you would like to see me do on topics like this, please feel free to comment. Let me know. If you see me in person, come train with me. Talk with me. Let me know what you guys think. I have a lot of video ideas I want to come out with where I have a lot of information where I feel like I can present it differently than a lot of other people that maybe it'll help you. Just like with my seesaw. I feel like the seesaw is a big thing that people can relate to because everybody understands seesaws. I'll see you guys on the next one.